Good morning, YouTube. Happy Sunday. Um, so wrapping up, wrapping it up yesterday, I decided to uh, mess with this car just a little bit more. And when I did that, um, well, I was able to get a fuel line fixed for it. You know, a temporary because I wanted to get this carburetor adjusted. But whenever I was changing these carburetors, it came with new nuts and new washers. I had set my old nuts and washers down on my radiator. Well, this thing's got some slits in the top of the radiator. And one of those lock nuts has slipped down in the slit down here right into the uh, fan shroud. And I, you know, I started up and I was tuning the carburetor and stuff. And I can tell you it was pretty responsive. Uh, and while I was adjusting it, I seen a spark around the fan shroud. And I thought, oh, that's weird. And then I thought, well, maybe it's just my imagination. Well, I was sitting there tuning on it some more. And I could feel water hit me in the face. I was like, what in the world? And that, that lock washer, when it had fell down the bottom of that fan shot, that fan picked that washer up and threw it right in that radiator and put a hole in it. Bottom, bottom pasture side corner. So here I am. You know, uh, luckily, luckily I went over to, uh, I went and looked around. I have a radiator, but it's a manual transmission radiator. I do have some transmission coolers. And honestly... I could probably go ahead and put it on there. But like I said, the, the automatic transmission's going wayside. And I looked and I have an aluminum radiator. I forgot all about ordering that and it came set up for an automatic transmission. It's just a cheap eBay, you know. I don't remember what it, I think it was $200 with that and it come with dual fans. I'm not putting the fans on this right now. And after what I've read about the fans, they don't last very long anyway. So, I will probably put an electric fan. I've read where people's putting fans off these four contours on here. And I'm also kind of looking into putting a, uh, like a one-wire 110-amp Chevrolet alternator on this thing. Converting it. And, um, that way I've got a little bit more amperage to run the, uh, the electric fan and, you know, whatever else. I'm not really running anything on this. No radio, no amp, no speakers. Basically just need enough of the ignition. And now an electric fan a little bit later on. But let me get this on here. Get rolling. Uh, une unexpected. Welcome to the world of heart rods. And it was my carelessness. It was my carelessness. Not paying attention. Not doing, you know... I was kind of in a funk yesterday. I feel a little bit better today. Um, but I really need to get this radiator back on this car. And I'm going to see if I can get this car back to running fairly decent. Uh, that way I can move it and drive it. Um, fuel lines are ordered. or Yeah, everything I need to fix a fuel line is ordered. Um, I did order a brand new radiator for this, though. I ordered a like a factory replacement aluminum radiator that's got the plastic ends, and I know they're not the greatest, but driver, it's a driver. And I'm gonna tell you this, I think it's brass, this radiator in this thing, it must weigh 50 pounds. Uh, matter of fact, we might weigh it. And now I've got the opportunity to remove the condenser out of here. And I'll tell you this, it ain't gonna be long I've got just a little bit of play in my water pump. So it's soon to be dead, for sure. So, that being said, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna leave it on here just for a little bit because, you know, the most I drive this thing in between testing is five miles. That's it. I mean, that's all I get out of these repairs, upgrades. I run for about five miles, I'm done. One night I did cruise around town for a little bit, and I probably put about 12 miles on this car. Um, I know once I get the roller cam and stuff in it, and the E7 heads, 
I'll probably drive it a little bit more because I've got a pretty good weight on my B5, B5 Beehive Valve Springs from Alex Parts. I've not actually got any acknowledgement on anything yet from him other than the fact that they took my money, which is fine. I mean, the guy's very reputable. And and I talked to him one time, and there is a backlog, so I expected the, the month and a half wait. Um, but let me get on this, and I'll show you what kind of damage a little bitty washer can do to ruin your evening. <laughs> let me tell you. All right, so I got everything removed. This is what I was talking about on the water pump. Well, it feels, no, I can feel it. You can't see it, but I can feel it. So that's how she starts. But that sucker nailed that radiator right there. And I might be able to fix it. Like I'm not too shabby at that. Um, and I might be able to fix it. And if I'm able to fix it, pressure test it. I might put it back in here. I don't know. But it's not going back in here today. I need this thing back up and running. So let me get started on it. Now this is the the Chinese replacement. And I was comparing it to this one. This is a manual transmission one. It looks good. I hope it is good. Uh, definitely going to get rid of this cap. Because it's got Chinese rotten all over it. We will see if this will fit. Yes. Yes, that did fit. I mean, that even... Sorry. I switched them out. If you notice, this has got Chinese writing on it. This is a better piece. All right. I'm going to get started on this. Nothing to it. It's already drained. Of course, it drained overnight. It had a slow, slow drain. So I just took everything off, unhooked everything, put a pan under it, went to the house. Oh, I'm going to go put this in a glass bead machine, clean this up and paint it. I'm going to go ahead and put a underdrive pulley on it. Nah, nah I ain't going to do that because then I have to go buy another belt. I'll do that whenever I do the manual uh whenever i get rid of the power steering so but i gotta get this together i gotta get the oil change in my pickup truck so here we go all right guys quick little tip this uh radiator is just a tad short so i just took some rubber hose cut it to length cut it in two and now i've got just the right amount that i need this thing to clamp down on there and that will hold it right in place just uh i know there's probably better ways to do it that's how i'm doing it today i just figured i'd throw that in there give you all a little idea all right one more snag radiators in everything fits up pretty good um my transmission fittings are eighth inch pipe thread. That's quarter inch. So I've got to go get some quarter inch to uh I believe these are five sixteenths. Lines. Five sixteenths thread. I'm telling you, I'm just about getting ready to put a transmission cooler on this thing. I'm, I'm getting a little aggravated. A little aggravated. Other than that, the hoses are back on. Got to tighten them up. But I definitely can't start it without those transmission lines hooked up. So I might have to make a mad run and go get me some fittings or try to find some. Just typical day here at the 606 garage. All right. Got the radiator on. Got the carburetor on. I got the carburetor on. Now, the way I've got the fuel line right now, I just got like a little 90 bin on it. I still got to get the uh, swivel fuel line. So I ordered all that stuff. Say hi to Jack. Axel. Hey, buddy. What are you doing, Axel? 
I got, I got like five dogs. All right, so I've got the radiator in. No leaks, no nothing. That worked out good. China seemed to pull this one off for, you know, a 1,200 feet cruise. The Edelbrock, super responsive. Super responsive, just like I thought it would. But under a load, that Holly pulls through better than this Edelbrock does. Now, I did do one thing. This thing had like a barometric damper on the secondaries back there. I thought, man, I'll remove that. That might be why it's lazy on the high end. Um, and another thing that might be killing it is the two inch spacer. Uh, the only way I know for sure is if I put the Holly back on, it kind of acts the same way. But I mean, as far as throttle response, like when you tap this thing right out of the go, this thing wants to jump. So I feel like drivability, it's better the way it is right now. I think reliability, I believe it's better the way it is right now. Um, we need to go ahead. All right, so we've tried this. I haven't tried it with the draggy. Um, I'm going to put those barometric dampers back in this carburetor. I don't exactly know what they call it, but it works just like a barometric damper. You know, it's just got weights on it, and as the air rushes through it, it you know, the velocity is what opens them up. Um, I should have about everything I need to put the heads on this thing. Um, I know I do, as a matter of fact, because I'm not going to put the cam in it right now. We're going to go ahead and do the heads, and... Uh, see what kind of an increase we got with that but i'm actually pretty i mean the car runs pretty stout i mean it it has come a long way because whenever i first got this car you could go out there and punch it to the floor and count to three before it hit five miles an hour and now it just jumps it jumps if this thing had 90 10s on the front of it look like it's gonna pull the wheels off the ground but that's that's a the extend the the ride you know it jumps and that's it um, lucky salvage the weekend uh, like I said just gonna fix a fuel line and stuff when I get the parts in they should be in by next weekend I don't remember actually I did order a new radiator oh, there goes my glasses I did order a new radiator but I think I'm gonna keep this one in here uh, I can always use it later on something else um I've got plenty of vehicles that need radiators. Whew. Guys, have a great weekend. Um, or I hope I hope your weekend was good. Let me just put it that way. I hope your weekend was good. Um, I have got to get back on my truck. Got to change oil in it, and I will I will be back to revisit you guys next weekend. Peace, like and subscribe. I hope you enjoy this so far.